What's going on guys? Today we are talking about the Armasite BNVD 40s guys. But before we jump into this review, we got to give a shout out to Armasite themselves. Thank you so much for sending us out a set of these BNVD 40s and the Thermal 640 Contractor to review. It's been a really good time the last few weeks playing with these things and we think you guys are going to enjoy the Thermal review we have coming out shortly after this as well. But today is about night vision, guys, and why you should own it. Night vision is one of those superpowers that you can actually buy. And everybody enjoys seeing in the dark. From all the different practical uses to also getting that Instagram clout, night vision is becoming very popular amongst the civilian crowd. And I believe everybody that looks through it is at least convinced that, yes, it is cool and I want that. Now... We spend way more time actually looking up at the stars than we ever do looking through these things on the range and that is perfectly fine because you will feel like you've been lied to when you take one look through night vision and look up at the sky guys. There are a ton of stars out there and almost always you will see a shooting star if you look up long enough on a clear night. There is more out there that we than we actually know and night vision helps you get a little bit closer to seeing that kind of stuff. But not to get all astrological on you guys here, we are here to talk about the BNVD 40s and why they should be a contender for your choice for your night vision endeavor. So the BNVD 40s guys, these stand for binocular night vision device and the 40 means the field of view. So the 40 degree field of view is where the 40 comes in and BNVD 40 overall is what we got here. So the BNVDs have been around for quite some time they're a very popular uh, model of night vision and they have several variations of BNVDs as well. Armasite specifically has the BNVD 51. So the only difference that we know of between these two devices, the 40 and the 51, is just the 11 extra degrees of field of view that you get with the 51s themselves. These things are pretty awesome and definitely covered on just about everything you could possibly need when it comes to buying a dual housing guys so we're going to kind of break this down pretty quickly of what the features are with the bnvds and also maybe a few little small gripes that we have with the package overall that we were sent so number one when it comes to night vision guys these are 2000 minimum FOM. FOM is a big number in the night vision world and that is what is going to provide a lot of your clarity and detail in those tubes. There is a ton of different acronyms on these spec sheets. I am nowhere near an expert on any of these things but I know that everybody looks for FOM and the higher the FOM the better. Now one thing people don't tend to realize is that these are all built to military standards which are not perfect guys. So each night vision that I've ever bought, unless you are specifically asking for hand-picked, unblemished tubes, you might see a blim or two in these devices. So me personally, when I close my right eye here and look through this left tube, I have a blim right here at about my 5, 45, 6 o'clock position, and it is sitting about halfway between the middle of the tube and the bottom. It is in no way, shape, or form in my way, but it is very prevalent that there is a blim in this left tube. When I go to the right tube, I have a blim up here at about my 10.45, 11 o'clock position, and it's a lot closer to the ring, as well as kind of a faded spot in about the 12 o'clock position, about 60% of the way up from the center up to the top there. So me personally, when I'm looking in an environment like this in my basement that is artificially lit up, a lot of white spots that we can actually see this stuff contrasting really well, I can see these blims very, very easily. Unless you go in and ask for unblimmed hand-picked tubes, guys, more than likely you will see stuff like this in your guys' units when you buy them. These are very normal and part of the standard of buying night vision. Now, when it comes to blims themselves, they need to be in an inconvenient or a more convenient spot for your vision itself and not directly in the center where it could mess up something that is an important detail because that's where a majority of your focus is. These are not in any way, and here in this environment, I see it very well when I'm actually out on the range and there's darkness between the stuff that I'm looking at, you will not notice these things hardly at all. So that is just one thing we wanted to point out when we're showing what it looks like through these tubes. You will see some black spots and just like the PVS 14 that we are recording this video on right now, 
you will notice that there is one spot and also one little hair looking thing that has recently showed up. I believe that is legit a hair that has shaken itself loose from inside the tube, but this stuff does happen. And as long as they are not in that worst of spots right there in the dead center, a lot of times these are very easy to work around. But the BMV D40s that we have have the 2000 FOM. They also have a set with 2300 FOM. I'm assuming there's still possibly some blims in there that it's just going to be a little bit better clarity of the tube itself. Now, these tubes have what seems to be a thin film on them. These are ghost white phosphor tubes. So I don't know if this is a specific branding or if this is a proprietary tube, uh, not proprietary, let's say a brand specific tube to Armacite themselves. Uh, that is something I couldn't really find on the research. The ghost white phosphor didn't have a whole lot of details attached to it, but it is white faux. It is 2000 FOM because I can tell you these are very comparable to the katanas I have, which are about 2000 to 2100 FOM as well. So we are very comparable there. I do believe these are thin film because they have that little bit of haze protective layer on it. And I don't know if you guys can see that from the videos where we're showing looking through the tubes, but it just has this kind of like little splotchiness built into the image itself. It's almost like the, uh, the kill switches that you guys can put on the front of your scopes and stuff like that. That's almost kind of the look on the outside of this. Now, when it comes to film, of tubes you have thin film and unfilmed unfilmed is going to be a lot more expensive because of the fact that it picks up details better and lets more light in the thin film works phenomenally well for everything i have if i don't have enough illumination on like the unit itself or my rifle i also usually have a head mounted illuminator that i can light up the area to make my thin film work just fine but there is a difference between those two and that is something you guys should look out for uh, when you are making your purchase and that may explain the differences in price a little bit better. Moving forward guys, the BNBD is packed with features. You have all sorts of adjustments here to get this set up exactly the way you like. When it comes to the tubes themselves and articulation, this is an absolute must for me. I believe you guys need to be able to kick these things off really easily or just use one quickly if you need to. Let's say you're out there hanging out with the buddies, you're on the stock waiting for something to show up. All right, you know, let's look at the tree line real quick. Yep, okay, we're good. Now, oh, I hear a rustle. We can go back down. Yep, that's definitely something. We're going right to work. So it, it gives you that option to just use one, be able to use your uh, other eye in a more natural environment if you need to. And what's just nice is that you can kick them up out of your eyesight and just have them kind of at the ready without having to hit a button and go completely up. Now, when it comes to articulation as well, one thing I really love about it is how easy they are to stow. You can see right here, this is how my RNVGs are. This is the basically the first type of unit I got. They don't articulate. So I can adjust everything to get them set up in front of my eyes, but I cannot personally do this, do a single, or anything like that. All I get the privilege of is up and down. And that is a lot of weight on the front side of your head. You can instantly feel this kind of start pulling down on your forehead and articulation takes it to where you can shift that weight back. So now I have a lot more balance set up on top of my head when I'm not using it, as well as being a lot less snag proof than this being sitting in a car or going in and out of buildings and stuff like that. So articulation is definitely helpful for a lot of different reasons and you'll notice that these a lot of times have auto shutoffs too so if you have it down or up you can actually kick these up out of your eyes enough to where they will auto shut off the pods and not be running and possibly cause any damage to the tubes because you're looking at a light or in a high lit environment that could possibly damage those tubes so auto shut off one thing that's a little different compared to my personal katanas my katanas will shut off right at the even mark. These don't shut off until you go past that. So that is something to keep in mind with the BNVDs. They do have auto shut off, but you do have to kick them up all the way past that parallel mark, if that makes sense. But also on this unit, you have the built-in day filters. So you can remove them if you need to, but I can take this filter right here, flip it right back over, and if I am in a uh, training situation where I'm doing this during the day or even you know some people run these things outside during the day for classes 
you have the option to do that with your daylight filters and they can easily be removed they're basically just kind of like tethered in here with a little piece of rubber band in a hole but very easy to swap on and off and very clear using them with the daylight filter as well down here like i can still see sorry they're they bend real easy so trying to put them on quick never works out but i can see everything just fine i just have a little bit of a you know obviously a darker image that i'm looking through but the clarity is still there down here in the basement right now we also have pretty good manipulations of this unit so your on off switch is right here in the front Pull it out and twist it clockwise to turn it off. Counterclockwise once is going to turn it on. One more time actually turns your IR on. So it's not going to do a whole lot down here. You can see this light shining off the front of my head. This actually will light up a very dark area for you and gives you that basically invisible flashlight on the front of your unit if you need it to uh, need to use it like that. We also have manual gain on this, guys. So what's really cool is I can adjust the brightness or the amount of light that is being allowed into these tubes. With it all the way down right now, I am barely, uh, like, I can still see clarity perfect, but there's not a whole lot of light coming in. So it's a steady, cool blue. And as I get into more darker areas, I can just slowly start adjusting that gain or real fast if I need to and get this thing up to the brightness level that I need it to be at. So really dang cool guys. I believe they have you know all the features that you kind of need in this thing as well as when you buy the pinnacle kit, you get the battery pack, the helmet and the illuminator. So you are pretty much ready to go right out the box with this thing. The battery kit itself will take four AA batteries or two CR123s and it is very easy to manipulate. You just reach on the back here and twist it one way or the other with middle being in the off position. Uh, the cord itself was very easy to connect and the only real complaint I have is that this thing does not have a whole lot of slack. So if you ride these out a little bit further from your face, you can see that cord is now pretty much tight. And my concern with that is not necessarily that it's tight there, is that right where I have it ran and the best place to, ran, to run it for the most slack is this way, it does tend to get caught right here on this button. So when I go up, you can see it try to catch right there. When I come down, I have to kind of almost help guide it around that button so it doesn't start causing a wear mark or get pinched in there or something. But the battery pack itself comes with a different type of dovetail setup. The dovetail has prong connectors that go into the screw holes. So that is how the power is generated through the unit is through the new dovetail mount with the screw holes themselves. That was a pretty cool, unique way to get power to the unit, I thought. And this thing can still be ran with the battery even when you have the uh, battery connectors set up like that. But you don't have to run the battery pack. This thing came with a normal dovetail uh, adapter right out the box. And it was very easy to take the screws uh, out and put this new dovetail acceptor on when it came to time to try to actually use this battery pack. But, you know, great choice of helmet, Team Windy lightweight helmet, slimline battery pack, articulating duals, and your IR illuminator. You know, one of the few complaints we have is that IR illuminator is very bulky compared to stuff that's out on the market. It is definitely not something you want to use on your helmet itself. Uh, the Team Windy helmet is available to take all attachments when it comes to ears, you know, uh, adapters to make pick rails, uh, to add your lights, your admin lights, all that different stuff, to, to add your patches, to add your retention systems. This helmet is ready to go. You're just going to have to buy a few more little things to get all that other stuff uh, accepted and connected. But that's kind of the way of the world with this stuff. You buy one thing, then you got to buy 30 others. Uh, Night Vision is a never-ending rabbit hole of expense and cool stuff, and there is constantly stuff being updated and coming out, so it's really hard to keep up. But, you know, a lot of this high-end name brand stuff is worth it because of the lifetime warranties and the uh, durability that this stuff has been tested to, right? So there's a reason why they are priced higher than the Airsoft versions, and a reason why there is no airsoft night vision out there currently but 
that's it guys. I hope we covered these BMVDs pretty well. They say you could get about 40 to 80 hours of battery life depending on what battery setup you use in the back of this thing. That is obviously not something we had enough time to test out, but it is what is in their ratings. These things are waterproof, drop proof, all up to the mill standards and have been doing a very good job of helping us see in the night while we've had these in our hands. But we look forward to giving you guys uh, more reviews on this kind of night vision stuff. That's it from us here at Gun Made, guys. We appreciate everybody tuning in. Hit that subscribe button, share it with your friends, and let us know down below what you think of these BNBD 40s. Do you guys have any Armasite products? What's your guys' experience with it? We really value y'all's feedback and look forward to hearing what you guys have to say. But that's all, guys. We look forward to seeing y'all in the next video.